let's get to this uh to this Trevor Noah. So they have the White House Correspondents' Dinner, and it's supposed to be, I don't know what it's supposed to be. its They say it's always, where all oh, the politicians show up to honor the free press and thank them <laughs> for speaking truths of power. <laughs> but not too much truth. <laughs> but yeah, that's yeah, that's like Chris Christie showed up to uh, give tribute to people who keep him away from the buffet. That's not real. That's not a real thing. <laughs> Well, right. the people who know the line of just enough, but not too much. That's, that's right. Much like with comedy. We don't want to be too funny. So I, I have, a, 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 you know, I used to, uh, on my old podcast, I used to break down the uh, the uh, White House Correspondents Dinner comedian. And uh, I was always, I think that, what was her name? That the, uh, Michelle oh, I, Wolf. Michelle Wolf was Killed the best. It. She did a great job. I think she got a Netflix show out of that. That's how good it was. But um so let's watch this, and I'm going to critique. Now, uh, Trevor Noah, uh, it's my theory. I don't have any, I don't know, I don't have anything to back this up except my gut, is that uh, John Stewart picked him because he, he, he didn't want anyone to do a better job than him. <laughs> I thought that I, too, Jimmy. That's what I And now Trevor say. Noah is a fine, He's his nuts and bolts of his comedy are fine. He knows how to deliver a joke and stuff like that. He's not a bad performer. Uh, but but the problem I have with Trevor Noah is this is all milk toast garbage. And then when he does talk about something, he's usually, he's a lot of times on the wrong side of the issue, which kind of takes the comedy out of it, right? And um, you know, anyway, so let's just watch it and we'll critique. Here we go. It is my great honor to be speaking tonight at the nation's most distinguished super spreader event. <laughs> no, for real, people, what are we doing here? Let's be honest, what are we doing? Like, did none of you learn anything from the gridiron dinner? Nothing, huh? Like, do you read any of your own newspapers? I mean, I expect this from Sean Hannity, but the rest of you, what are you doing here? You guys spent the last two years telling everyone the importance of wearing masks and avoiding large indoor gatherings. Then the second someone offers you a free dinner, you all turn into Joe Rogan, huh? So I don't understand what they're laughing at. And I don't, want, I don't mean to be a jag off. But these that when I first saw this, I was like, "How are those jokes? Those <laughs> those seem like uh, just uh, yeah. honest observations about the hypocrisy of these pieces of shit that are in front of him." But it sounds all, like he's not aware. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's just like so this this COVID narrative that you have split the country over and demonized and screamed about. None of the people are following it, including this guy. They're all getting together at a super spreader event without masks on, and they're all laughing about it. But I thought Governor DeSantis was a maniac, and I thought anybody, Joe Rogan, and I thought, what do you got? What? Yeah, the Joe Rogan part I don't get, because I thought he was in trouble for his horse. Yeah, horse, horse dewormer. Uh, horse apple dewormer and uh, not and so here, advocating spreading. And so here they are out there at a, at a super spreader event, and they all laugh about it. I mean, according to them, it's a super spreader event. Not to me. Uh, I I, under, I understand uh, better the science of COVID than anybody in that fucking room, I'm going to guarantee you. <laughs> uh, because they're all going to get it. Half the country already got COVID just this last winter. Did you know that? Half the country got COVID, got the Omicron. That's how. And just like Dr. Robert Malone explained on this show last summer, last June or July, that what's going to happen is the virus will mutate. It will become more contagious and less deadly. That's exactly what has happened. And so now it's super contagious, but less deadly. Now it presents as a cold for most people. Uh, anyway, I just, I don't mean to be, I, I, it's a nitpicker about that, but that drove me nuts. It's like, oh, so now you all, you guys get to wag, you wag your finger for two straight years and now you all get to giggle. Okay, all right. I mean, Dr. Fauci dropped out. That should have been a pretty big sign. <laughs> Fauci thought it was too dangerous to come tonight. Pete Davidson thinks it's okay. <laughs> and we all went with Pete. Okay. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. Well, I guess Pete Davidson is, was there. Is yeah. he, he's there. So it's just turning into this. It, you know, politics is supposed to be Hollywood for ugly people. That's what it's supposed to be. 
And now they, Kim Kardashian was there and Pete Davidson was there. It's like, what the? This just. Now it's for stupid people. <laughs> yeah, no, it's for. <laughs> I like Pete. I'm not against Pete Davidson. I, it, but uh, it's hilarious. The, the darlings, like how many darlings are left to invite to this? Not many. Uh, so let's remember what the real purpose of the evening is. It's to remind the government and media elite that we're all in this scam together. That's what this is. Because they are. Well, <laughs> so let's get to more. And so as we sit in this room tonight, people, I really hope you all remember what the real purpose of this evening is. Yes, it's fun. Yes, we dress nice. Yes, the people eat, they drink, we have fun. But the reason we're here is to honor and celebrate the fourth estate. Uh, uh, no, that's not. The, that's not. That's why he gets the big bucks. Ah. Uh, because he could say that shit sincerely. <laughs> oh, by the oh, I skipped all the. Well, one's for the other key. I did it wrong. Yo. Uh, you know why Pete Davidson was invited to the White House Correspondents' Dinner? Because unlike Madison Madison Cawthorn, he knows how to keep his mouth shut after an after dinner coke party. <laughs> <laughs> uh do you think Fauci skipped the dinner because he was afraid of COVID or because he didn't want to face the razor sharp wit of Trevor Noah? <laughs> <laughs> Probably it's just because even Fauci has the brains to know how it looks to be in a room full of wealthy COVID vectors maskless. OK, that's probably why. Trevor, what are you doing there? <laughs> Does having a perfectly round head protect you from COVID? <laughs> Could, it's It would be a great point if Trevor asked these people to read their own fucking newspapers about the dangers of COVID that they've been printing nonstop for the last two years. It would be a better point, though, if, if he was making this over Zoom. That's what that's what I think. <laughs> yeah, he's there, too. So if Je Trevor, if Jen Psaki had three shots and she got COVID twice, she oh, probably that's, right. That's from the other clip that you sent me where you're going to show him talking oh, the, to Jen Psaki. Oh, the Jen Psaki clip. Let me do yeah, that. Yeah, because you read, yeah. That's right. I got a Jen Psaki clip coming up, so people are getting excited. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here we go. Let's go back. Why, why are we all here, so he says. in this room tonight, people. I really hope you all remember why? What the real purpose of this The real is. purpose. Yes, it's fun. yes, we dress nice. Yes, the people eat, they drink, we have fun. But the reason we're here is to honor and celebrate the fourth estate and what you stand for. What you stand for. Uh -huh. An additional check and balance that holds power to account and gives voice to those who otherwise wouldn't have one. And, and, and like. Did you notice how there was this huge pause before they started applauding after he said that? So he said, You guys stand for holding power to account and giving a voice to people who otherwise wouldn't have one. There was a full second right there where the entire room was going, Wait, what? <laughs> oh yeah 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 go okay that's what was happening oh yeah 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 okay here we go i'm not just talking actually i think the reason they took that beat to applaud was because they were bracing for a joke about how none of them live <laughs> up to any of what trevor just said yes then when they realized he was serious they went oh is he like a slow kid or something that's nice <laughs> I mean, half the room sincerely believes that it's their sacred duty to make sure large amounts of the population don't have a voice. So half that room sincerely believes that, and the other half of the room cynically believes that. That's a really well-written joke. <laughs> <laughs> About like CNN or Fox or any of the other major organizations. If anybody in that room <laughs> stood for anything remotely like giving voice to people who otherwise wouldn't have one wouldn't their ratings be better <laughs> yeah. right they get rogan ratings <laughs> they, they would get rogan ratings <laughs> they'd be getting 11 12 13 million views per ethic here we go talking about everyone you know the young journalists we saw today you know intrepid journalists who aren't even in this room in flint michigan or that daring reporter at the des moines register or the unflinching local newscaster in el paso texas every what? single one of you whether you like it or not is a bastion of democracy <laughs> who's he talking about what 
the people who are manufacturing consent for oligarchy are each and every one of them a bastion of democracy. <laughs> so, I mean, it's obvious this guy's not from America. <laughs> it's obvious. But it's almost like he's not from this fucking decade or generation. What kind of, but this is the craziest bullshit. Okay, here we go. And if you ever begin to doubt your responsibilities, if you ever begin to doubt how meaningful it is, look no further than what's happening in Ukraine. Look at what's happening there. Journalists are risking and even losing their lives to show the world what's really happening. <laughs> and that's just the ones captured by Ukraine. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you you know that you know the punchline that's coming. Of course, he's not he's not even going to mention Julian Assange. So he's talking about people doing propaganda in Ukraine. I think that's what he's talking about because he's certainly not talking about the people exposing the war crimes that are being committed by the people we're on the side of. He's not talking about that. Uh, I don't know what he's talking about, but uh, he's certainly not talking about Julian Assange. The number one journalist, anti-war journalist of our generation, who is now in prison, not because he lied, but because he did exactly what he just said. He actually spoke truth to power. He actually told the truth about the powerful. And this guy is so cow, such a cuck, kowtowed corporate entertainer that he's not even going to mention him. And what he's do you think he thinks? About Julian Assange, like, how, th what do you think he would he would say if you brought up Julian Assange? Like, he would say Julian Assange helped Trump, and he worked with Russia, and Julian Assange yeah, should be. That's what that's what a guy like that would say. Which is exactly why John Stewart chose him, I think, because John Stewart did not want somebody to come in and do as good a job as he did. And there's we, no way this guy can do it. You know what, uh, Atel? Because I used to say it all the time in a much like dirtier way, and and uh, Atel, who's friends, you know, David Tell told me he's like, no, I think what it is it, it? John Stewart's like a. a He's like a rich liberal. It was like his, you know, his like white guilt thing, but it wasn't. He didn't get an American black guy. He, they all yeah. like like a foreign. That's like a thing rich people love is somebody from another country yeah. who's like well spoken and all. So that's what that is. Is his like upper class like oh this is really diverse. It's just corporate safe is what it is. Uh, so here we go. You realize how amazing it is. Like in America, you you have the right to seek the truth and speak the truth, even if it makes people in power uncomfortable. That's not true. Even if it makes your viewers or your readers uncomfortable. That's, they, they're all sitting there going, who, uh, boy, who are these people he's describing? Because it certainly isn't us. We all work for the richest guys in this country who are pulling a scam on everybody, and we're their mouthpieces, because that's what they are. Jeff Bezos, the richest guy in the world, owns that. The, the, uh, it's It's... A handful of billionaires own our entire media in the United States. So don't kid yourself into thinking anything he says is true. That's the fairy book tale. That's the propaganda they want you to think. That's not real. Believe me, if you did what he said to do, say truths that make powerful people uncomfortable, you will first be deplatformed. You'll first be smeared in the newspapers and the Daily Beast and the New York, all those places. You'll be smeared as a, a conspiracy theorist. Uh, then what will happen is they'll deplatform you and then they'll take away all their ways of making money and then they'll throw you in jail if you remain somehow be able to do damage to them. You'll, they'll do to you what they did to Julian Assange. They tortured Chelsea Manning. You know who tortured Chelsea Manning? Barack Obama and Joe Biden tortured chelsea manning okay that's not a that's not hyperbole they did that uh and of course he'll never bring it up why and that's why he got chosen because this guy has been chosen to do this job since he was in kindergarten he's been groomed i'm talking about trevor noah and that's why they picked a guy like that because he'll never say anything that actually challenges power he'll never say anything that challenges that audience let alone the president the last person that said something that challenged that audience, they had a meltdown over it. It was Michelle Wolf when she told them they're all hypocrites because they love Trump because they say they claim to hate him, but they couldn't stop talking about him nonstop because they were all making money off him. Look at the their faces, dude. Like even they can't believe they that can't he's believe this. The shit he's saying. <laughs> like, they're like, what is they he know talking Julian, about? They know Julian Assange is in prison right now. They know Joe Biden's trying to kill him along with the security state. 
and the entirety of the UK and American government. They know this. Look, I guess the only wait, guy in the room who doesn't know it is Trevor Noah. Go ahead. Yeah, he's a, a chump. They go, look, they're like, wait, I, no, they, they're not supposed to make us uncomfortable. They're like, <laughs> they're going, right? like wait, are we going to be made uncomfortable? What is he talking about? So here we go. Understand how amazing that is? Jeez. I stood here tonight and I made fun of the president of the United States and I'm going to be fine. Is that what you call I'm gonna it? Be yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's right. Trevor Noah was able to make tepid jokes at the president of the United States, and he's going to be fine. He's going to be fine mainly because Joe Biden thinks he's Barack Obama's son. I think that's why he's going to be fine. <laughs> I've, I mean, I've seen some bullshit in my life, but this is unbelievable. Does he this think is, he's like hard hitting? It's Trevor like, Noah? do you like, want to? What he's trying to do, Trevor Noah, is highlight to anybody who didn't notice that he didn't say anything that challenged power. Nothing. He didn't challenge power at all. Did he even bother to try? Did he even get a moan on anything he said? No, he did not upset. So he's in a room full of the oligarchs and their mouthpieces who run everything and set the agenda for our culture. And he's got a chance to confront them. His whole fucking show is about showing what a bad job the media does. That's what it's supposed. That's what it used to be about. You it was know, showing what a horrible job the news media did and what liars politicians were and how what a disservice they're doing. And it was bipartisan. That guy doesn't have a clue of what that fucking show is supposed to be about. He doesn't have a clue of what Jon Stewart did. And I think that's why they chose him. Go ahead. Well, I mean, Jon Stewart was also a comic before. Like, he was like kind of like a hag from South Africa. So it, it's being written for him by whoever the staff is. Right. I mean, even the stuff people like on Jon Stewart or Steve Goblet, there's writers that make that. But did you see when he said to Jen, he had one bit to Jen Psaki. I don't know which writer from the Daily Show that was any good that made it. And he said, you're going to be at MSNBC, so your job's going to be, you know, a lot different. So, like, not just helping the Biden administration. Actually, you'll be fine. Like, he did a thing acknowledging. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's solid. I know Trevor didn't write it. So, here we go. Fine, right? <laughs> like, do you, like, do you really understand what a blessing it is? Maybe it's happened for so long that you, it might slip your mind. It's a blessing. In fact, here, ask yourself this question. Honestly, ask yourself this question. Ask yourself this question. Did you think the comedian was going to give the audience and the president such a big hand job tonight? <laughs> Did anybody think that? Do you feel that underneath your table? That's me giving you a psychic hand job. <laughs> Come on. Are you guys going to applaud for me? Think about how great you guys are. You guys are the greatest. This country's the greatest. Joe Biden is the greatest because he's not going to prosecute me. You guys are the greatest. We're all the They're greatest. Not, this is the this, greatest country in the world. Come on, you South, guy. Why don't you just get fucking Larry the Cable Guy? Um, <laughs> does South Africa not have free speech or something? I, I don't know. I don't know much about South Africa. Um, but he's probably a white supremacist because he comes from <laughs> South Africa. <laughs> If, if Russian journalists who are oh. losing their livelihoods, oh. as you were talking about, Steve, and, and their freedom for daring to report on what their own government is doing, if they had the freedom to write any words, to show any stories, or to ask any questions, if they had basically what you have, would they be using it in the same way that you do? Ask yourself that question every day because you have one of the most important roles in the world. Thank you so much for having me. Ah, uh, boy, I wish I could get a hand job like that sometime. Wouldn't, that would be <laughs> nice, especially in public while I'm wearing a suit. There's nothing nicer than that. So, uh, Trevor, uh, I guess he doesn't read the news. He hosts a show called The Daily Show that makes fun of the news, but I guess he doesn't know that the Biden administration is continuing to seek extradition of WikiLeaks Assange. And what for? Not for lying, for telling the truth. That's what Julian Assange is in prison for. Not for, not for lying, but for telling the truth about the war crimes that the United States government committed in Iraq. That's why he's in prison. Uh, 
And so the reason why Trevor would never have to worry about making fun of the president is because you're not exposing anything about the president. You didn't even say demented once. You didn't even say it one time. <laughs> if you ever, if, if Trevor, if you were any kind of threat to power, you would not have been invited to that fucking dinner. And like, that would be a funny joke if he said that. He goes, ah, let's be honest, I'm not going to do anything that upsets anybody. If I was, I wouldn't be invited. That would be a good joke. At least it's honest. Yeah, right. Well, misinformation is when it's dishonest, and then disinformation is when it's honest but doesn't help the power structure. <laughs> That's disinformation. Here, here's from The Independent. It says, the silence of the press on the Julian Assange hearings is a disgrace. And they know... Remember the last time they had one of these? My, um, Randy Credico went and he was reporting for us in real time from the White House co Correspondents Dinner. And he got up and he was the only one who said anything about Julian Assange. And you know what they did? They cuffed him and threw him out. Mike Birbiglia said, I've always respected. <laughs> 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 For bigs, what it <laughs> <laughs> comedian Mike Mike Birbiglia, uh -huh. He tweeted out, I've always respected Trevor Noah so much. But this closing speech <laughs> this closing speech from the White House correspondence dinner is particularly spectacular because he took something that's meaningful, saw, shaved off all the sharp edges, turned it into a fucking milk toast bullshit presentation. I think that's why he liked it so much. He likes him because he's like a nice peanut butter and jelly sandwich on white bread with the crust cut off. <laughs> that's exactly right. <laughs> Mike Birbiglia. I don't know. I don't have anything against Mike Birbiglia, but I do have some good jokes about him. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Birbiglia, or, or as I call him, if khaki pants were a person. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, he's super successful. It's okay to make fun. He is the embodiment of khaki pants. What they're meant for. <laughs> Why they were invented. If they gained sentience. But he's right. Mike Birbiglia is right. If you ask any comedian who they respect so much, <laughs> and they will say Trevor Noah <laughs> I mean sometimes I'll be in a green room with a bunch of other comics just talking shop you know and we'll start quoting our favorite uh, Trevor Noah bits <laughs> all of us <laughs> the the only comic I can, we, we respect as much as Trevor Noah is probably Mike Birbiglia a close second close second <laughs> Okay, those are the jokes I have for Mike Birbiglia. By the way, no, <laughs> he doesn't respect Trevor Noah so much. No, he fucking doesn't. Shut I, up. I don't think he does. I thought that's, Mike, you liar. I thought that was all show business. It's a, it was very show busy. Yeah, he re he respects using Twitter to, I guess, get ahead in show business. I don't know what that gets him to tell that lie, but. I, I don't know. Well, here's what Max Blumenthal said. He's a real journalist, and he said... I played court jester, and the president didn't order my assassination. Therefore, the government trying to destroy Julian Assange for publishing facts that embarrassed its opaque security state and corrupt political elite is a shining example of democracy. <laughs> well, Julian Assange should have thought how blessed he was maybe before he did what he did. Yeah. What a blessing it was to and, and have so, such a wonderful... <laughs> and so there is Trevor Noah giving a hard, high hand job to every... A corrupt a propagandist in that room and what we i want to remind you is that each one of those people are hand selected by the establishment to be in that room right so that's why people like me and kurt will never be in a room like that or julian assange right because we color outside the lines and here is noam chomsky going to remind you of how this all works he was being interviewed i think by a canadian they eh? And uh, let's let's follow along. A censoring organization. Um, so he's talking about that how how the establishment media manufactures consent, and how each journalist inside of it is handpicked, and how the 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 ownership of the media matters, and how the who who funds the media by meaning advertisers, all that stuff. And then he's talking about how each independent 
journalists self-censors or and here we go tell me how that works is that you're not suggesting that um, proprietors phone one another up or that many journalists get their copy spiked as we say it's um, actually orwell <clears throat> you may recall has an essay called literary censorship in england which was supposed to be the introduction to animal farm except that it never appeared in which he points out, look, I'm writing about a totalitarian society, but in free democratic England, it's not all that different. And then he says, uh, uh, unpopular ideas can be silenced without any force. And then he, how, how? he gives, two, so he gives a two-sentence response, which is not very profound, but captures it. He says two reasons. First, the press is owned by wealthy men who have every interest in not having certain things appear. But second, the whole educational system, from the beginning on through, just ex gets you to understand that there are certain things you just don't say. Well, spelling these things out, that's perfectly correct. I mean, there, it's the first sentence is what we expand this on. Is, this is what I don't get, because it suggests that, I mean, I'm a joke, people like me are self-censoring. No, not right. self-censoring. Uh, there's a filtering system that starts in kindergarten and goes all the way through. Uh, and it it's not, doesn't work 100%, but... It, pretty effective. Uh, it selects for obedience and subordination. He's saying that we have a system that feeds people into these media organizations and it self-selects for obedience. That's what he just said. Let me, let me back it up a little. And subordination. And subordination. Uh, and especially, I think... So, so, so stroppy people won't make it to the be influence. Behavior problems or... You know, it, so that's people like me and Kurt. We're, that's why we're comedians, because... We learn the things you're not supposed to say, and unlike those people who go into journalism, we say them, right? So we say we get off on saying the thing you're not supposed to say, which is why we're comedians, which is why when we put our eyes towards journalism, we do a better job than they do. Well, I just have ADHD, so that was most of my problem. That was but, uh, but my, like the apple polisher kind of, you get your trapper keepers in perfect order in school, and you get the extra credit, and all, like the people that. They didn't learn stuff in school so much as they got good grades in school. Like, you know, there's like people that are smart and they learn and they yeah. get And then there's people that are like, oh, this is going to look great on my application. Like, right. That's what you just train to be like that. And you would never say anything that would interfere with your own personal advancement. Like, that would be crazy. That's right. what a crazy person would do. That's what a crazy. That's why you're why I'm a comic. If you read uh, applications to a graduate school, you see that people will tell you he's not, uh, he doesn't get along too well with his colleague. You, you know how to no, interpret this. <laughs> I, I, I'm just interested in this because I was brought up, like a lot of people, um, probably post Watergate film and so on, to believe that journalism was a crusading uh, craft and that there were a lot of um, disputatious, stroppy, difficult people in journalism. And I have to say, I think I know some of them. Well, I know some of the best and best known investigative reporters in the United States, I won't mention names, but I'm like, whose attitude toward the media is much more cynical than mine. In fact, <clears throat> they regard the media as a sham, and they know and they consciously talk about how they try to play it like a violin. If they see a little opening, they'll try to squeeze something in. That so what he's telling this journalist from another country is that I know the best journalists in the United States and they all think that the news media is a sham. So people who are better than you, people who are more celebrated and more famous than you as journalists think this is a big sham and they're more cynical than me. So what he's also saying to that guy is you're a bit of a chump because people who are, you, <laughs> yeah, who are your superiors and and your betters and we all know they are award winning. They think this is much worse than, and you're defending the system that they think is a sham. So that's what he's also telling that guy in that moment. Did so, you you see ahead. when the guy said, are you saying we self censor? Because like the guy's like, I don't say he goes, no, I'm saying you don't have the capacity to even break out of the yes. lines. <laughs> that's what he's saying. Like a lower. <laughs> By the way, I'll tell you what, what's amazing is that, you know, not saying anything wouldn't help you. I got into comedy specifically, so I would never have to make a tweet saying how much I respect Trevor Noah's <laughs> abilities. Like, I like him fine. I talk to him, get along the fine. I would never in a million years have to tweet about how amazing. I mean, then just like sleep after that. No wonder Mike sleepwalks. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't make it through. Uh, and it's perfectly true that the majority, I'm, I'm sure you're speaking for the majority of journalists who are trained, have it driven into their heads, 
that this is a crusading pre- uh, profession, adversarial, we stand up against power, very self-serving view. Uh, on the other hand, in my opinion, I hate to make a value judgment, but the better journalists, and in fact the ones who are often regarded as the best journalists, have quite a different picture. And I think a very realistic one. How, how can you how can you know that I'm self censoring? How can you I know don't say that you're self censoring? I'm sure you believe everything you're saying, but what I'm saying is, if you believe something different, you wouldn't be sitting where you're sitting. Bam! <laughs> I'm saying if you weren't say if you didn't think what you thought and you weren't saying what you're saying, you wouldn't be sitting in that chair. So that's so that's good for everybody. Now maybe. <clears throat> Michael see this and he'll understand how shitty journalism is in America and why what Trevor Noah said was a fucking joke and an insult and it only and it only plays to shit libs who have no idea what's actually happening in the world or their country or in the news. You see, you got to have a pair of khaki pants on your mind to make it in this. <laughs> <laughs> is your mind in khaki pants? And let me just show Julian Assange. Here's Julian Assange talking about the me- how the how every war gets started by the media. Here we are. And finally, Julian, who do you consider to be your number one enemy? Well, our number one enemy is ignorance. Um, and I believe that is the number one enemy of everyone, uh, is not understanding what is actually going on in the world. It's only when you start to understand that you can make effective decisions and effective plans. Now, the question is, who is promoting ignorance? Of course, well, those organizations that try to keep things secret, um, and those organizations which distort true information to make it false or misrepresentative. In this latter category, um, it is bad media. Um, it, it really is my, my opinion that media in general are so bad, so um, bad. we would have to question whether the world wouldn't be better off without them altogether. <laughs> um, there's some very, very fine journalists, um, and we work with many of them and some fine media organizations. But the vast majority are awful. Awful. And are so distortive to how the world actually is um, that the result is we see um, wars and we see corrupt governments continue on. One of the hopeful things that I've discovered is that nearly every war that has started in the past 50 years has been a result of media lies. The media could have stopped it if they had searched deep enough, if they hadn't um, reprinted government propaganda, they could have stopped it. But what does that mean? Well, that means basically populations don't like wars. And populations have to be fooled into wars. Populations don't willingly and op- with op- like this, Like this Ukraine war and how we've been fooled into supporting this, extending the war uh, against Russia. The war should be over. There should be a, a settled peace negotiation. We all know how this is going to end up. And what the United States is doing is using the people in Ukraine as cannon fodder. And so is NATO. And eyes go into a war. So if we have a good media environment, then we'll also have a peaceful environment. So there you go. So that's what the media is doing. Media is starting wars, not stopping them. Uh, and the media, of course, is the number one smear of guys like telling you the truth. They're not going to tell you the truth. The media is so bad, so corrupt. They do such horrible job in misinforming people that we'd be better off without them. That's what Julian Assange says. And uh, there's a lot of truth to that. And you know, you this say- one, yeah, this this Ukraine one is even like at least with the Iraq war. They at least were like, well, we were attacked on. I mean, it didn't connect, but they were like, we were attacked on. I'm supposed to care about this, like, like Ukraine's the 51st state, and uh, they're they're worried about disinformation. Are, are we fighting the war? Why would it matter what the disinformation is here? Yep, right. What possible? Like, that's the thing that's crazy to me. You're I was like, we need you to be on board for this thing. That's not your own country. It's another one, but you need to care deeply about it. That should be suspect to everybody of why they want me to care about the people of Ukraine while they don't care about the people of Yemen. That's that's another thing. I forgot to bring that up. Do you know that while Trevor Noah is saying that and talking about those journalists in Ukraine, why don't you talk about the journalists in Yemen? Why don't you talk about the journalists in Libya? Why don't you talk about the journalists in Syria where the United States is occupying a third of that country illegally right now? Which third of that country do you think it is? It's the part with the oil. 
Why don't you talk about the journalists in Afghanistan? Why we're, we're killing more people now than when we were bombing the place. That so that's the kind. So that's why. So I just want to say to our friend Mike Braviglia, that's the problem. And your surface level understanding of politics is laughable. That's actually a good joke. <laughs> uh, one of, one of those better ones. That fuck. That was good. That was unbelievable bullshit. That's why that's why Trevor Noah was invited there because he's a milk toast uh l- ass licker of the fucking establishment. That's why he got hired. You know, Michelle Wolf, Wolf I thought did a good job. But she did. It wasn't like it was particularly edgy. It wasn't like No, she just told us so, yeah. She just she told a small truth at the end of the thing about how they love Trump and all made money off him and they yeah. melted down all over that. Yeah, Trump who can't take a joke, that's the big thing about him. Yeah. All these every in fact, Hollywood, DC, somebody says a minor truth to them and it's like, oh, oh yeah. like Trump can't like, take a joke. Yeah, Trump's a regular Will Smith, the guy who just gave <laughs> the guy who just gave the Academy Award to in a standing ovation. We're doing live stand up shows in Cleveland, Columbus, Pittsburgh, Des Moines, Omaha, Kansas City, Las Vegas, all over the country. Go to JimmyDoreComedy.com for a link for tickets and single tickets now available at all venues. So if you tried to buy one before and you couldn't, single tickets are now available. Plus, while you're at JimmyDoreComedy.com, why don't you become a premium member? Sign up to our mailing list so when they cancel us, we can still stay in touch. Mm-hmm. 